Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the off-track overtake of F1 podcasts. Track limits? Pa! We don't need track limits. Monza's got gravel. <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the red flag that isn't a red flag of F1 podcasts. I'm stopping this podcast, but we're not calling a red flag. We're just stopping the podcast because, honestly, it's a real bald ache to stop it and start it again. So we'll just leave all the cars on the grid for ages. It's fine. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, as disappointed most days as Ferrari are today. And most days. Third and fourth is winning this year. <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, hitting the new drivers, like what Lewis did. In the car or just like for their lunch money? Well, we don't know where Piastri keeps his lunch money, so maybe. <laughs> if he kept it in his front wing, <laughs> Lewis is laughing all the way to the canteen. Welcome to For Formula One Sick, the podcast F1 deserves. I'm Drew Stern, and there's nothing you can do about it. Tonight, we embrace the tired stereotypes that we've come to rely on and look back on the Italian Grand Prix. Pizza, pasta, Ferrari screw-ups, what's the matter with you, hey? Yes, Monza had it all. We'll dissect Max Verstappen's record-breaking winning streak and ask whether Ferrari could and should have done more. Then we'll answer no and probably not. That's all to come. Joining me is a man who went out-out. It's Phil Tromans. I realise that for some people on this podcast, specifically Terry, this is just just a, just a normal week. But uh, I, I went to a gig without a child. It wasn't a child gig. It was just it was a gig to see some live music. It was amazing. <laughs> who was the band? Because we know that you've got terrible music taste. Uh, it was a, uh, a a rapster called B Dolan. And I went in and I was like, oh, this is great. I'm having a lovely time. And then the support act was a really, really good but exceedingly intense trans slam poet um, <laughs> who sort of came out with some absolutely sort of mind-ripping, beautifully delivered and crafted stuff, but it just sort of kicked me out of my sort of gentle reverie. It was, good. was this in Hayward's Heath? No, Brighton. Ooh, I've heard of that. Slam poetry in Hayward's Heath is not this it's is not the same that thinking. it could be. <laughs> And beside him is a man who has a new phone. It's Terry Saunders. The other Ooh. day, I had an insight into what it must be like to be super rich. Because I went to the Apple store and I have a 13 Pro and the camera's broken. And my Apple Care was nearly running out. So I was like, great, I can get a new and get it fixed. And so I sit and have an appointment and they kind of look at my phone and go, oh, the camera's broke. We need to give you a whole new phone. And I'm like, oh, this is amazing. And they do a little thing on their iPad. And then someone just brings me a new phone. I'm just sat there. Someone just comes out of nowhere with a new phone for me. And I'm like, well, this is, this must be what being rich is like. You just go, I want a Diet Coke. Uh, here it comes. And then after I'd wiped my phone, she was like, okay, well, that's going to be 100 euros. And I was like, oh, you really <laughs> made it sound like it was free. <laughs> so I've got Apple Care, And she was like, I will have to give you a new phone. She didn't say for 100 euros. So then I, I coughed up 100 euros for a brand new phone, which I'm not complaining about, but I did have Apple Care. And then I remember that I had a, one of my AirPods is broken, just stopped working. So I say, oh, I've also got these AirPods. Can I get this fixed? And she was like, oh, she did the whole test and the whole diagnostics thing. And she went, okay, yeah, this, this one AirPod is broken, but we can sell your replacement AirPods for 100 euros. And I'm like, hang on a minute. <laughs> Her AirPods the same as a whole phone. She's like, well, we haven't got Apple Care on the AirPods. And I was like, I know, but I'm feeling like you're just plucking 100 euros out your ass every time you want me to pay something. <laughs> Can I go to the toilet? That'll be 100 euros. And um, so again, someone comes out the back with a little kind of box. It's not on a cushion, but you can imagine it comes on a cushion. And she opens the box, and I just paid 100 euros for a single AirPod. So now I've got a set of AirPods that are like three years old. One of the AirPods is three years old and will die soon. And the other one is brand new <laughs> for 100 euros. I hate Apple. I was going to say, it sounded like you were bigging up Apple and saying how great it was and made you feel like you were really rich while you were going in there to replace all the things that had broken at vast cost to yourself. Exactly. But isn't that how rich people do? They just borrow money and it's fine. Well, they would have kicked <laughs> off and we'll made a fuss and got it for free. Maybe I should have said I'm an influencer. Have you not heard of For Everyone's Sake? No, not the one with David Coulthard and Eddie Jordan. The other one. No, yeah. Or the other, and not the other one that has like 12 it's, listeners. That's also called For Everyone's and Sake. And still or, haven't changed their yeah. name. Oh. Depressed now. Have you sued them yet? I feel like we should sue them. We can't afford to sue anybody. It's 100 euros to sue someone. <laughs> yeah. If you'd like to help us sue the other For Everyone's Sake, then... Uh... I'd like, to, I'd like to sue Eddie Jordan. That'd be fun. 
And take your for iPhone what? to the Apple store and say, it's broken. There's a two podcasts on here with the same name. Don't fix it for 100 euros. <laughs> What, what have you been to? ripped off for lately? Uh, no, I've uh, uh, I've been trying to figure out what my uh, role in professional life is, and I have since <laughs> we last had me on, I've set up a couple of new endeavors and companies, and one of them Ooh, uh, I'm cool. having a bit of fun with is a um, a production company that specialises in comedy production. Doing um, uh, first, we started doing small gigs, and we've got our first commission to produce an hour-long special for a comedian. So that's coming up in October. Ooh. Yeah, with a full crew, and d- um, I'll be directing that. So, yeah, uh, having some fun so it, with that. That sounds like fun. Yeah, it's kind is of that the kind of thing cars. where some some comedian kind of comes to you and said, "I'd like to film a special," and then they'll pitch it to someone. Yeah. Well, they uh, they have some budget set aside. They've made some money, and they want to produce it themselves. And if they can't, sell or does it, a production company come to you and say? So th- th- this is the comedian themselves who wants to um, uh, have a go and, and and produce their own hour long special and try and sell it themselves. And uh, yeah, I it's just started from doing small gigs for people and um, doing headshots. I did some I did a headshot and poster design for a comedian at the Fringe, um, and kind of word went around the Fringe of the work that I was doing, and then that came back to me as a uh, wanted a quote for doing an hour-long special, so that's um, although I wasn't at the fringe, uh, my name was being banded about and my work was being talked about, and it's led to some more work for the back half of the year. So that sounds like the best way of doing the fringe. Oh yeah, not being there, but being talked about is the best way. <laughs> yeah, so it's it, I was getting calls from people at the fringe, uh, so that was yeah, it would have been nice to have been there, but yeah, this was kind of nice. So one of the things I'm doesn't make a lot of money yet, but who knows. And it's doing filming comedy stuff, which I really Yet. love. Yet, it's making money. Well, we said that when we first started the uh, when we first started the podcast. We said it's not making a lot of money yet, but now, eight years later, it's still not making that much money at all. Yet, Phil. Yet. So good luck. <laughs> Off we go to listeners' corner before locking up and sailing past it on the escape road. As it's Italy, let's talk about Ferrari, who threw everything at getting decent result at Monza, and it was actually looking good to start with. Not only did Carlos Sainz manage to get pole position, but he held on the lead from the start. We then had the unusual sight of Max Verstappen trying and failing to get past him, at least until he got past him. And then Sergio Perez got past him too. Still, third is pretty good, right? Joshua Jake Stewart says, anyone else find it unusual that Ferrari made the jump from fourth fastest team to pole sitters and race leaders at Monza? Is that oil burning I smell? Oculus says, how much did Leclerc desperately try to Ferrari it up in those last few laps? Avind Anderson says, instead of trying to annoy Max and thereby helping signs, it seemed that Chuck Leclerc decided to let Red Bull hunt down the other Ferrari while preserving his own tires just to have a go at cuckolding third from Carlos. <coughs> However, Justice isn't blind, but very much into Carlos's magnificent hair. So in the end, Carlos prevailed. But only after Leclerc almost out ferrari the Ferrari strategy team by almost taking out both of the red cars. Dixon Cox says, Is it the most Ferrari thing ever to try that hard to screw it up for themselves at their home race only to fail and actually get a good result? Yes. Yes, it is. Peter McLeod says, best red on red action since Putin bumped off Progrosian. Oof. Ferrari. Imagine if Putin was in charge of Ferrari after the, after the year he's had. He'd, he'd probably do worse. Say, <laughs> say what you like about Putin, but he runs a solid F1 team. Uh, you mean Haas in the last couple of years? <laughs> okay, I'll take it all back then. He doesn't run a solid F1 team. Well, he's not very good at running his country at the moment either. Um... What was the question? Ferrari. <laughs> Some things to address in the uh, in the listeners' comments. They suddenly went from kind of nowhere in the last race to somewhere in this race. And in fairness, this was always the one they were sort of targeting on. I think like everything they've done in the past four months was like, right, Monza. We've got to try and do well at Monza. So I can sort of understand why they did that. Yeah, and I'm sure... And it I'm nearly sh- I'm sure if they're going to cheat, they may as well cheat at Monza. <laughs> You know, like what I don't understand is if they if they're putting all this effort into making sure everything's ready for Monza, why don't they just do that? But say they're going to do it for every single race, and then they'll do much better. You're making Formula One sound easy, Phil. Although, I mean, let's not forget also in qualifying, you know, Signs did get a get an investigation because his 
his uh, warm up lap was too slow, which should be a slam dunk. Yes. But obviously not a Monza. But no, it was fine. It was back to the FIA, meaning Ferrari International Assistance. I haven't said that for a few years because we haven't needed to because <laughs> Ferrari just can't help themselves. That was a weird one because I, I, my understanding of that admittedly rather niche rule is that it's like speeding in the pit lane. Like if they think you've done it, you've, you've done it. No, I actually checked the rule book and the rule book says um, it's a slam dunk unless it's a team at their home race and then we'll just let them off because it's nice, isn't it? An Italian team at their home race. Italian team. Unless it's Alpha Tauri. Italian team at Monza with F in the title. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I mean, you know, fair play to them. They they had a target and they did, frankly, better than I expected them to do. And yes, Leclerc, who has, I've gone right off just from a sort of he's a really good driver point of view because he's just not really had it in the last few races. Well, we, um, we've talked before. Did his best to mess it all up. Yeah, we've talked before that he's gone down the Alonso Vettel path. And actually, Sainz was very impressive. He was on it. He was good. He seemed yeah. like, you know, I actually thought he was going to hold off Max Verstappen for a while, but, you know, um, I was... I mean, I mean yeah. Verstappen was all over him for so long. I was like, there's there's only so long that this can work. He's clearly much faster than him in the moment that Sainz makes a mistake, and he did make a couple of mistakes. But that's the longest that's ever it's, lasted, right? Have it that, that yeah, holding yeah. Max off? And they've got beef, haven't they? Because they were teammates for a while, if I remember rightly. Was it back in Toro Rosso? Well, they were. And don't they not beef? Do they not like each other? Well, I heard their dads hated each other to the point they had to be separated in the garage. Um, Ooh, yeah, like, yeah, there was a, that's a that's a dynamic I'd like to learn more about. Carlos Sainz Senior. Carlos Sainz Senior versus Jos Verstappen. Yeah. Got, oh, how many races did you win, Jos? Oh, oh, what's that smell? <laughs> Are you on fire? <laughs> how many world championships have you got? <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, okay, Carlos. Could even you're too stupid to think of a name for your own son. Oh, that's not the best. <laughs> not the best insight. You couldn't win a world championship without somebody next to you telling you which way to go. <laughs> I mean, I think they should bring that into Formula One, but that's uh, that's for another day. I'd like to see this as a spin-off from Drive to Survive. <laughs> it's just like sort of Frost Nixon. Verstappen and Sides are just roasting each other in a in a rally cart. <laughs> No, not in a rally car. In one of those, in one of those kind of games you get at the supermarket. You know, the the ones that are outside with the, in the eighties. <laughs> oh, a Peppa Pig ride. <laughs> yeah, but I'm thinking. I'm I'm going back to my childhood. I'm thinking more. Um, I don't know. Some kind of death trap. Thomas the Tank Engine. Probably made of aerated concrete. Uh, <laughs> a very peculiarly British reference there for all our international listeners. Sorry. Yeah. All our schools are falling down because we've got no money. Britain uh, is crumbling. I mean. <laughs> I mean, it is in literally, figuratively, yeah. Um, That's right. We, I, but don't worry, I don't worry. Ferrari... We've got the Nazis coming back here, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ferrari uh, did about as well as they probably could have done, and probably, let's be honest, better than anyone thought they could do. I, I think they should, should be, be fair? they should be happy with themselves. You know, they were never going to beat Red Bull. I mean, the only the only sad thing really was a few years ago. Max Verstappen would have definitely crashed trying to overtake sides. And he's just too good these days, which is sad. He is. He doesn't make mistakes anymore. And he's got an amazing car. Yeah. Wanker. Um, but yeah, I think they, should, they, can, they can be happy and go back in the next race to being woeful and making terrible mistakes. Yep. Meanwhile, Max Verstappen took his 10th straight win with an all-time record. This has prompted a range of responses. Jamie Penning says, We've witnessed history at Monza with Max's 10th win in a row, a record that most people thought wouldn't be broken. Yes, such dominance can be boring, but this achievement should be celebrated as it's likely to continue as almost probably never going to be broken again. However, as a counterpoint, Bernard Boer says, Everything's shit. Modern cars are so reliable, it's shit. Checo is so shit, it's shit. DRS is shit. Even Ferrari were shit at being shit. Can someone please make Max do something shit, or at least do something shit to Max? Okay, firstly, I didn't realise that when I got drunk, I tweeted as Bernard War because that's, those are my words exactly. <laughs> um, right, isn't that isn't that the mission <laughs> statement for the podcast? But can we just say, Jamie, I'm sorry, you're so 
so wrong because I'm old enough to remember being told that Michael Schumacher's seven championships would never get beaten again. And then, oh, we're yeah. witnessing history because Lewis Hamilton has won seven championships and that would never get... Oh, he's got more pole positions and centre. No one's going to beat that record. Someone else is going to beat... Some child who's like right now in nappies is going to be in Formula 1 in four years and soon we're going to be going, oh my God, I didn't realise it was possible to win all the races for three years running. Oh my God, what an amazing guy this this person is. Ah, oh, shit. It is shit. What's his name? Um, J.R. Hartley. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Is anyone under 40 going to get that reference? I Those have, that do will love it, though. They say in podcasting, you've got to have a niche. And my niche is people in their 40s who grew up in Britain. <laughs> And like Formula One, <laughs> and like swearing. <laughs> it's a valid point, though, because they, I mean, the Michael Schumacher records, they stood at least for, you know, a, a couple of years. It took a, a wee bit of time before Lewis came along. And then Lewis broke everything. And then we did think that would stand for a while. But then immediately, adjacent to that, directly after, we had now have someone breaking all these records. So presumably, it won't. It literally won't take that much time for someone. Well, else remember to come that along. before Lewis Vettel was breaking records left, right, and centre. Exactly. Wasn't he? In yeah. fact, I think one of the records. I think was it this record that was Vettel's. I think so. Yeah. That Max has just bust. Yeah. So. Well, wasn't that just the Red yeah. Bull record? I don't know. We d- d- don't ask for actual facts. We don't have them. But I can but- tell you about Yellow Pages adverts from forty years ago. <laughs> Terry, Terry, you brought this up in one of your um, uh, your pieces in the podcast a couple of weeks ago, the fact that, that we live in eras now, and that it's just the Max era. And it, But it is impressive. Ten in a row, even, even for oh, yeah. a team that dominant, to not mess up once, to not have lost a race since last season. I tell you, yeah. kind of mind-boggling. They're, smash, they're smashing I it. I tell you what's more impressive, though, is somebody saying that something you said a few weeks ago is, like, <laughs> good. <laughs> That never happens. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And not using it as evidence in some sort of legal. It is way. an era, isn't it? Yeah, that I was right. Yeah, it's an era. I'm, I've totally forgotten to say that, but I'm really glad I said it because I was right. I was very, very right. Some of us do actually listen to what you're saying, Terry. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and record it for posterity and legal reasons. In other news, <laughs> racing drivers love to complain that they've been robbed of a result in a race, but Carlos Sainz had the temerity to complain he'd been robbed even after a podium at Monza. In fairness, though, that's because he was actually physically robbed of his watch shortly after the race, which can't have been much fun. Sainz chased after the three men that stole his watch and caught one of them, and his people managed to stop the other two. There was some suggestion that Charles Leclerc chased after them too, but he lost ground thanks to poor strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I should have pre-read that. But that's really funny. I mean, it sounds like he's fine, and he was wearing a stupid watch, so he deserves it. <laughs> he was. He was wearing a very, very, very expensive watch. Like, why wear an expensive watch? I don't get the fucking point of these stupid he fucking was watches. Paid money. He was paid money to wear it. He's like an it's ambassador. Not even his fucking watch. <laughs> Give him the fucking watch. If someone came... He's like a model. If, He's like an influencer. If someone came to steal something that wasn't... like, If someone came out to me and said, excuse me, can you hold this? And I said, yeah. And then someone said, can I have it? I'd be like, yeah, fine, go for it. <laughs> like a baby. That's why we don't let you look after anything. <laughs> yeah, when am I going to babysit next? <laughs> yeah, that's why Matt has had to buy so much recording equipment over the years. <laughs> oh, but was it a reshirt meal? Oh, that the watch that he it had. was, I think. Oh my god, yeah. those watches! It's like I mean, a two hundred and seventy-five grand. It's insane. Meal. Can those I retell my favourite story about Richard Meal, which I have definitely told sure. before? Okay, because you've got more than one, or well, I've only got the one. So, do you remember years ago, a very sad thing: a marshal died during a race. I can't remember which race it was. I think it might have been Canada. I can't remember. And a marshal got killed. Yes. And in the race afterwards, they put the marshal's name on everyone's car to kind of in tribute to be like hey it's really shit and Marshall died and then yeah I thought the Marshall was called Richard Meal because <laughs> I saw the oh, name on the no. car and then about two years later I was like Jesus Christ they're really they're really fucking <laughs> paying tribute to this Marshall and then Phil told me that it was a watch brand so that's how much I know about watches <laughs> and now let us remember <laughs> Richard Meal Jack Daniels and <laughs> Roscoe, Roscoe yes. what's it called? Rolex. <laughs> everyone who's lost, everyone, everyone who's lost their life in the pursuit of F1, including Ayrton Senna, <laughs> Epsom Printer, 
Oh, oh, I'm doing the niche references to a Tyrrell from 1990. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Penthouse. Jerks. Anyway, I'm just naming sponsors now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we can joke about it because... Uh, well, actually, when, the more I think about it, the more it's like, okay, he got robbed, it's bad. I want to know exactly how this happened, that he was robbed of his watch... But then he and his entourage then chased down and caught the people that did it themselves. It wasn't like the police did it. They clearly were like, okay, here's the watch. Right, now I'm going to fuck you up. But they're all well, very I'm intrigued drugs, to know the sort of the logistics of it. Did they run or did they well, use their fast cars? <laughs> they just ran them down. They just had Ferraris and just chased them down and ran them down. Since when they got to the three oh, men, they pulled off their mask. And it was Jos Verstappen, Helmut Marko <laughs> and the late Dietrich Mateschitz. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of Dietrich Really Mateschitz. slowing him down, to be honest. Uh, so we can of course, his real it. name, and his, his when he died, his real name was uh, was put on all the cars because his real name was Red Bull. <laughs> Contract news: George Russell and Lewis Hamilton have both signed up to stay at Mercedes for at least another couple of years. Is anyone surprised? No. no. What else? Like, what else are they going to do? I'm slightly dismayed because I think Lewis Hamilton's going to go down the path of you know other ex world champions that we could name of. Trying to get that last championship on, well, so and just, just <laughs> gonna. Stay. I reckon like Mercedes next year will be a bit shit. I just, I just don't see it happening, and I think he should quit. And I love him. I'm, I'm just trying to do some maths in my head. If Hamilton stays on for as long as Alonso has, trying to get that last championship. Bear in mind, Alonso's last championship was 2006, which was 17 years ago. <laughs> that means that Hamilton's not going to retire until 2040. 40. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, I mean, at which point he'll be 60 years old I'd be I'd, no wait no no I'll younger. be 60 so he'll be about yeah that's right 50 31 <laughs> and Alonso will still be racing I saw on Instagram the other day a conspiracy theory that the reason that Alonso is doing so well is because do you remember he had a, a testing crash and there was rumours that the car got electrocuted because it was when they were just bringing in the, the new Urs system or the hybrid stuff, yeah. Yeah, although it was, yeah, it was a hybrid stuff, wasn't it? It was that year in McLaren. And there's a rumour that sounded like a joke, but I looked at some more of these guys' posts that he got electrocuted and has stopped ageing. <laughs> <laughs> what's the point of doing a podcast? He's got, anymore? like, superpowers. <laughs> oh, what's your superpower? Oh, I, I heard can... that Max Verstappen... Yeah. Super... I heard that Max Verstappen was at a lab and got bitten by a really fast racing driver. <laughs> But I know a lot of superpower is that on a good day he can come third. <laughs> <laughs> he was bitten by a burning bridge. <laughs> he was bitten by a younger Fernando Alonso. <laughs> <laughs> he just paid Nelson PK Jr. to get bitten for him. Ooh. Tell us how wrong we are. You can tweet us at for F one's sake or find us on Facebook where we're for F one's sake. Or email us wrong at ff1s.com where you can also leave us a team review. Just email a voice note to wrong at ff1s.com. Alternatively, if you think we're right, then why not buy us a beer? That's how we make show. You like show, then you buy beer. Thank you to all these fine listeners who have done just that in the last month. They are Keith Russell. Keith Russell. Russell yeah. Square. Yeah. Neil Fraser. Yeah. Fraser is Miss Lee. Fraser. Fraser. Earnhard War. Lee. Jenny War. And Jenny and Ralph Bryce Davies. Bryce Andrew Cunningham. Davies. Davies. David Cunningham. Jennifer Bindley. Finley Quay. Brightman. Sarah Bradley. 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 Gabriel Rosenkutte. Estabio. Hey. Michael Perry. Michael Perry. Perry. Hewings. Michael Hewings. Thanks, Michael Rigby. Rigby. Marble 127. Hoffman. Greg Hoffman. Griffin. Groff Groffman. Beck. Groff Groffman. <laughs> Groff Groffman. I got stuck. <laughs> Be like them and bask in our adulation. Join our patrons by heading to ff1s.com forward slash pint pint pint. Their F1 teams love their drivers, love money. And their sponsors too, and their teams, <laughs> F1 teams, and their teams, F1 teams, Red Bull. Red Bull have now won more races than there have been races. Max Verstappen let Carlos Sainz think he was going to win and then went on to win the race again. 
They're going to win every race this year, aren't yes. they? Yes. And by they, I think Max Verstappen is going to win all the races this year. They'll let Perez have Mexico Yeah, but he'll, he'll fuck him. it up. Like, they'll literally give it to him and he'll do True. something stupid. Like, he'll put a wheel on the grass or he'll drive the wrong way or something. Max is petty enough not to let him have Mexico, oh, that's right? True. When, when, when is he no, ever No, that's true. Giving? The team will probably arrange it. So they'll say, okay, we'll get to lap four and then Max will let you pass. And Max will just go, no, I must win everything. <laughs> yeah, he'll come on the radio and say, I, I don't do that. He'll literally don't say that out again. loud and uh, be have like no my shame. daughter who's yeah. three and just goes, no, that's not how we do it. I'm voting for your daughter to, to run Red Bull for the rest of the year just to anything. <laughs> anything I mean, to get out the you know, season I've, get more I've interesting. Heard of weirder... Uh, reality TV shows. <laughs> Ferrari. Carlos Sainz got a great pole and then everyone made out he was going to win, but he didn't. He managed to cling on to third place, but lose his watch. Some days you can't do anything right. Did he have any chance of winning the race? No. Well, he did, and that chance was Charles Leclerc driving into the back of the Red Bull, but obviously Charlie just didn't want to do that. Yes. I mean, you know, we saw one Red Bull-affiliated team lose a car to reliability and that was the only way that they weren't going to do it or somebody was going to plow into them other than that no they're too quick too quick can't do it i, w- I will go back to bernard wall's comment there and just say look the the reliability is getting ridiculous like unless you're out for the old days unless you're out for terrible but it was better in the old days when you know this it's just the fact that you can doze off in a race, wake up again, and just be like, "Oh yeah, it's all the fucking same." Better pitch stop. Well, that was the only chink in Mercedes' armor for quite those years. The races that they didn't lose were often down to if it wasn't Nico and Lewis going into each other, it was um, reliability issues, and uh, that Red Bull yeah. just don't have them. And F1 have managed to pretty much eliminate the most disgusting of all problems: finger trouble. And finger trouble was the best part of F1 for a couple of years. It was just like, oh, no, we've got this humble million pound car, but he screwed the nut on the wrong way. Whoopsie. <laughs> no, it's not even that. It's all I done by Bull, fucking AI or something. I don't know. The thing is, everyone's going on about Verstappen, but Red Bull, the team, are as good now, I think, as they were you know, during the Vettel years, except I think Verstappen is better than Vettel. And that's why they're just yeah. absolutely crushing it. I mean, I think the next rule change, they should just ban Adrian Newey. And Max Verstappen. <laughs> <laughs> and Red Bull. Fortunately, it's got too much of a competitive advantage, so uh, we've, we've considered it, and we've decided that you're we're not... Batting, a- we're batting movable aero, uh, designers who are bold, and, and the teams Dutch. named after colours and animals. <laughs> So Blue Panda's got yeah. no fucking chance. <laughs> I was going with Panda as well. You got there first. <laughs> Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton did a very clumsy move on Piastri and was a bit mediocre all weekend. George was less mediocre, with a bit of a scrap with Perez, but Sergio finally remembered what car he drives and overtook him. <laughs> oh, that's right. My car's really fast. He does seem to struggle to remember that sometimes, doesn't he? Is Sergio just more proof that Red Bull maybe isn't that brilliant, but Max Verstappen is. No, well, no. You, you just said that they were brilliant. No, they are. And the car is brilliant, but Verstappen is also brilliant, so he takes it there every... Like, Perez is a, is a very bang average driver, I would say. Like, he's fine. Whoa. He is benchmarky, I would say. If, if you're asking people's top five F1 drivers on the current grid, nobody is saying Sergio Perez. So... He's just, you know, it's just proof that it's not enough just to have a fast car. You also need to have a good team. And it's not enough to have a fast car and a good team. You also need to drive it. If anything, he's doing F1 a favor by proving that it's not just about <laughs> a fast car. You know, it's the Fair. surgery. No, I agree. But um, to go back to Mercedes, I think that the sheen's coming off Hamilton a bit, isn't it? That this is what I mean. This is kind of the... it was pretty. I, I watched it again. I was like, "Yeah, that's slam dunk Hamilton's fault." There's no argument. Yeah, that was that. A, that was total shit. And it's just like you know, you lose a luster, you finish in fifth and sixth, and everything. You're signing for two more years with Mercedes. I just think he's gonna he's he's gonna leave F1 like a like a PK or a Raikkonen, where you're like, "Oh God, I got he quit," or even a button. Hmm. I don't. I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't I don't, want I to ever compare Hamilton and I Button. St- 
I still think even Hamilton on a shit day is still a really, 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 really good driver. But right now, Verstappen is doing a better job. And, you know, you could argue that it's easy to do that when you've got a super fast car and you're super confident and everything's not going wrong all around you. But uh, I love Lewis Hamilton, but I've got to say, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm becoming a Max Verstappen fan, but if Max Verstappen's in his prime now, he's making less mistakes than Lewis Hamilton made in his prime. Fewer. Fuck you, <laughs> you, you, c- Phil. <laughs> I mean, you keep setting them up. I'll keep smacking them out. Um, what did you think of Hamilton's dig at uh, Verstappen this week? Did you hear about this? Where he basically said that all, uh, Verst- I mean, I'm paraphrasing. He basically said all Verstappen's teammates have been shit, and all his teammates were brilliant. So therefore, fuck you, Max. <laughs> was the gist of what he was saying. Mm. Heike Kovalainen. Yeah, so that is the big flaw in his argument. But um, <laughs> it's still probably broadly overall true, I think. But yeah, there are, there are a couple of little exceptions. Well, Alex Albon's pretty fucking good. He is. He wasn't a Red Bull, though. He was. He was. Nah, he wasn't good enough to keep his oh, seat. He had exactly. moments, but he wasn't good enough. Well, um, that's if you believe it? Red Bull. Th- th- what? I mean, just exactly that, Phil. Don't question me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have a follow up. That's my mistake. <laughs> yeah, bloody hell. Pull back the curtain. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little old man sitting there looking scared. No, Alex Albon was a, a, in a long line of Verstappen teammates who basically, yes, Verstappen is much better. But also, Red Bull didn't give him a fair chance, really. I don't. I think that's probably fair to say. I think they just kind of went, "All right, you do the same as Max. Off you fuck." And no one could, you know. I don't. And think now he's can... in a Williams. He's doing very well. Well, this is it. I don't think you can necessarily measure. You have to measure them at the time, than rather now. Like now, Albon's absolutely kicking ass. But when he was at Red Bull, I don't. You know, bar a couple of moments, I don't think he was. Um, and likewise, now Ricardo's a big pile of useless one-handed nonsense. But when he was a rebel, he was pretty good, but not as good as Verstappen. I mean, Verstappen's very good. I mean, is that what this podcast has become? Verstappen's very good. Verstappen's very good. Oh, Verstappen's That's what very F1 good. has become. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the days when he crashed at Monaco. Or fuck I mean, at least with him in Hamilton the other year, there was some argy-bargy. You know, I just want... I thought the Ferraris were going to do some argy-bargy on him this week, and they didn't, and I'm disappointed. I mean, Leclerc was gearing up for it. Yeah, but, but Leclerc's and, too shit to hit him. He kept missing him. <laughs> and it was hinted at earlier on, but it did feel like Leclerc was biding his time to make sure that he had a shot at third rather than uh, actually going to take second at the beginning of the race. So I don't know. That, I mean, that, that might just be... Sense. Maybe he's a realist. He's like, I'm, we're not going to beat the Red Bulls. I don't care how every, how optimistic everybody at Maranello is. It's not going to happen. You're never, I'm just going to the only way to beat them is to team up on them. Like... It, yeah. like he can if you got he was sandwiched between those Ferraris for a, a while and not m- big gaps like manageable gaps and you know could signs have backed him into Leclerc a little bit more could Leclerc have bothered him a bit more from behind it that sounds weird uh, yeah it wouldn't have worked but it wouldn't have you been. have to try something no yeah. you should every every man for yourself take out your teammate stab him in the back steal third place glory to the I'm happy, I'm happy with all of this anything for more chaos Williams. Alex Albon is amazing and thoroughly deserves his amazing drive finish in seventh. I feel like he did better. So the question is, is Logan Sargent or Alex Albon who is showing the true pace of this car? It was Ooh, nice good question. It was wow. nice to see Alex Albon doing well and, and not being bullied by Lewis Hamilton when they had interactions on the track. Not not like Lewis through because they had history of colliding quite a bit back in the day when Albon that was at Red Bull. Was it Red Bull, Phil? I think you'll find. <laughs> when he was at Red Bull and battling with the Mercedes. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. Is okay, this is I think this is a good question, Drew. Thanks for asking. Um is Logan is the Williams as shit as Logan Sargent or as good as Alex Elbert? That's uh, a better I'd way of wording. Say the latter because, <laughs> I'd say the latter because I don't think that Alban is I think he's doing really well, but I don't think he's top tier in the sort of you know, Verstappen, Hamilton class, Alonso class. So I think his 
I think he's getting the most out of that car, and Sargent is quite disappointing. I mean, yeah, the car surely is as good as the fastest driver in it, right? Well, some would yeah, say but... that actually the best drivers are faster than the car or some bollocks like that. I think Max Verstappen's faster than the car. Do you? Where would you put Logan Sargent against Sergio Perez, your benchmark? Way below. Phil. Way below him. Ooh. Wow. I, th- I think Sargent has just come into F1 way too early. I think he's shown signs of promise, but it's, it's too early and he's not uh, he's he's not the finished article yet, and he just. I'm really pissed. Thanks. Yeah, I'm really pissed off with Sergeant to be honest, because uh, we had a whole season of army related jokes, but he just doesn't feature enough to bother. <laughs> no, I and mean, there's only so many times we can. If we'd have demoted him every time he'd done badly, he he'd have had a dishonourable discharge by now, and I think we've already made that joke like four races ago. So, you know. <laughs> if he's a skewed, if his name was Logan Rick General, said. we'd get more mileage out of that joke, but. Is he just Logan Civvy now? <laughs> yes. He's Logan desk, desk Clerk. Does F1 have a really skewed view on rookies? Because there's been such radically different results from drivers who are new into Formula One, from ones that have come out the gates and been spectacular, and the ones that have been really bad and disappeared quite quickly. Whereas in every other sport, you start from the bottom and you build your way up. And, and mm. very few sports, anyone comes in and is straight at the top straight away. When F1, it seems to go both ways quite radically. But it's only gone both ways, I think, in the last 20 years. Because I think Lewis Hamilton was the first kind of genuine rookie. I mean, maybe oh, Schumacher Reichen. did the amazing test. Reichen and Schumacher, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're talking top teams. Because like, you know, Schumacher tested yeah, for I'm Jordan not, yeah, and then went to Benetton. Wait, did Jordan fall he, was, <laughs> he showed so much potential straight away. I think like, even he, if the car wasn't one, fast, it, it, you it could tell you. one race, didn't he? Because he didn't finish at Spa in 94, whenever it was. No, I think it was just a test the qualifying. Qualifying. <laughs> And then got a Benetton. But he showed enough promise to get the drive. Yeah. But I think it was Hamilton who came in with a top team and you know, was able to be in the running to win his first race. And admittedly, Verstappen did come in to Toro Rosso, um, but they was in Red Bull within 20 minutes. But it's an unfair advantage because if you're driving for a McLaren or a you know a Red Bull quite quickly, then you've got this whole race winning team behind you. But if you go in like an Alonso at Minardi or a whoever, whoever, uh, just dub in something clever there, um, then Sauber was it? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Right on at Sauber. Then, <laughs> then you've got to be really good to be better than the car because you might be driving a shit car. Whereas if you're good in... It's like we just said just before. If you're good in a good car, you look good. If you're good in a shit car, you might still finish 15th and you've got to know what you're looking at to see if this person's good or not. That's true. But I think that I think the, the thing of Hamilton coming in is really unusual because so often it just wouldn't work. Like Hamilton... I seem to remember at the time, everyone... The sort of prevailing knowledge from what I remember, and I might have got my dates slightly mixed up here, was that in Mark Webber's terms, you shouldn't put fucking kids in cars because you remember when Vettel was at was he was he already at Red Bull or was he at Toro Rosso when he crashed into the back of Weber and Weber it was Toro Rosso it was and he was just like this is what happens if you put fucking kids in F1 cars and that was the sort of the prevailing wisdom is that you know you needed to build up to this and and Hamilton was the sort of the exception and I think Verstappen is another exception but mostly we see Rookies who've turned out to be really good, they only become really good after a couple of years of being rookies at yeah. crap teams. Like the fact that we can't think of that many others suggests that it is pretty accurate. And if you can't manage to do everything you need to do at a rookie team, then you're not going to be able to do it at a top team. True. And also, don't forget that when Max Verstappen came in, they literally changed the rules about. Super licenses and age afterwards because they're like, well, yeah, oh, there's was, no way he's going to be any good. Was he 17, was he, or 16? Oh, he was signed when he was 16 and he raced. I think he would turn 17 by the time he had his first race. Oh, fucking hell. It's nuts. But he, you know, he's a, a once in a generation kind of level talent, um, as was Hamilton. That's why we rate them so highly, I think. And, you know, most people just cannot do that. You need to have years and years in the lower formula to, to have such, you need to be so good at so much stuff. You can't all be David Coulthard. No, exactly. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> Much to my chagrin. Aston Martin. Lance Stroll lived up to his name, Lance, by being a frustrating boil in everyone's way. Alonso did his usual magic, but the pace wasn't there. 
What is going on with Aston Martin in this phase of the season? They're not that good at the moment, but they were quite good last time, but this time they're not. Next time, maybe they'll be good again, or maybe they won't be. Aston Martin. What is the next race? Do we even know what the next race is? Singapore. Oh, they'll be good Uh, at that. Oh, I thought we were going to do that show. Okay. Left enough silence there. (laughs) Um, No, I think... I mean, Lance Stroll just feels... Either his wrists are hurting... Or he's just given up because he was shit. Stroll. And he's been shit all year. Stroll. Yeah, Is that what I said? Yeah. Really dropped off, hasn't he? To the point that I wouldn't be... I don't think they'll fire him for next year, but I wouldn't be surprised if even Daddy Stroll is going. Do I have any other children? <laughs> <laughs> Can I adopt I Alex he's Albon? <laughs> This is my new son, Kimmy Stroll. He's quite old. <laughs> He's been living Fernando in the woods Stroll. Stroll. Oh shit, we've already got him. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh. I mean the car the cars. The car's just the car. It's the car. It's the car. Thanks. And Lance Stroll. Alpine. Alpine were awful this weekend, both shit in qualifying and also shit in the race. At least Gasly finished. Ocon retired because his steering wheel wasn't working. For some reason, it was steering him backwards. Is this a fundamentally shit car or the inevitable result of firing everyone but the drivers? I mean, it does feel that Alpine is like the Mary Rose right now. Just, no, not the Mary Rose. That's the source. The Mary Celeste. The Mary Rose it does feel like... <laughs> and the source, <laughs> Phil. I think you're fine. It's a Mary Rose source. I think you're fine. That's when you mix tomato and mayonnaise, isn't it? That's just burger sauce, isn't it? Like burger sauce. Hang on. Hang on. Sorry, Matt. I've got, I've got a Google Mary, Mary Rose sauce. sauce. This is the important isn't stuff it? we need to talk about about Alpine. Is it Mary is Rose sauce? sauce? Like the... I've never heard of Mary oh. Rose sauce. Isn't that like the posh... I think it is burger sauce, but it's a posh name for it. The trouble with Mary Rose sauce, it would be go down a bit too easily. Why is it called That's Mary really Rose sauce? Joke. Everybody missed it. It's a really good joke. It's for prawn cocktail. It's a sauce in prawn cocktail, Phil. Oh, we're right. back to the 80s again, are we? Yes, Phil. It's just possible you could save my life. <laughs> what? That's another line from a Yellow Pages advert, the one where there's a scratch on the table. It's furniture oh. repair. <laughs> oh, yeah. The French polisher. Of uh, course we do. It's not all work, work, work. It's an at West advert. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> cook, cook, cook. <laughs> Cookability. <laughs> That's the beauty of gas. Cedric. Accrington Stanley. Who are they? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hello to all our international <laughs> listeners who will have no idea what we're talking about. McLaren. <laughs> McLaren. The McLarens did some argy-bargy and led the race for a memorable bit before they pitted, and then Lewis Hamilton slapped Piastri's nose, and what's the bloody point? I mean, we've been saying this for eight years. (laughs) What is the point? What's the point? I mean, the McLaren are the most up-and-down team this year. Well, you say that, apart from Alpine and Aston Martin, who we were just talking about. It's the same problem for all of them. It's like, we're great, we're rubbish, we're great, we're rubbish, we're great, we're rubbish. They repeat till the end of the season. So is it just that the grid is too close? Because I think this is the, the paradox of this year, isn't it? The grid is so close, Apart except from for that the... huge gap at the front. Yeah. yeah, And just, you know, a minor variation in track, suitability to track or whatever, will leave you a podium down to out of the points. It does seem like this is the case. Like everybody has sort of come out of these latest regulations and they've landed so closely together that, you know, as you say, like it's slightly warmer, therefore we've got no pace or the tyres are slightly it's a bit twistier on the track therefore we're way off the pace apart from Red Bull who are just like oh we're brilliant everywhere what are you guys doing it's really I weird. really hope I really hope that Red Bull get found to be really fucking cheating because <laughs> that's the only way that makes any fucking sense there'll be books in they are like... there'll be another Adrian Newey book where we're like well they all didn't realise that I'd, inc- I'd invented the uh, quantum accumulator the fifth... we had the fifth wheel on the bottom of the car <laughs> It was disguised as the floor. Good idea, that, isn't it? We had a co-driver. You... We got the idea from Carlos Sainz Sr. <laughs> hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Right. If you put a fifth wheel in the middle of the car and maybe gave it its own engine, I don't know. Or would... no, no, let's keep it with the same engine. Would that make a car quicker? Is more wheels more quicker? Dear no. Mr. Newey. 
<laughs> I have an idea for your next car. <laughs> Otherwise, if it was quicker, we would have seen it by now. But also, the middle is where the driver sits. So yeah. you'd have a wheel right between your legs. It's a tiny wheel. It's like a little Lego wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I suggest uh, you know, extra weight, extra rolling resistance. Wouldn't work. Ugh. Also, no tires. <laughs> you're going <laughs> you're to somehow get Pirelli to secretly develop a really tiny little car tire just for your car. Little Lego tire, yeah. That and how would this change work? in two seconds? <laughs> I already said that. I like the idea that they Did go to the Lego tracks, more you tires than bloke, Pirelli. You see one bloke just go scooting underneath the car on his back and then come back out again. Alpha Tauri. We had two submissions for team reviews this week. We presume everyone else is on holiday. And they were both for Alpha Tauri. This one is Don Janacek. Alpha Tauri. Sonoda out of the race on the formation lap. I'm all for going for originality, but that might be taking it a bit far. And from Jamie McNaught. Lawson has grabbed his F1 opportunity with both hands. One more than Ricardo, both figuratively and literally. Reaching Q2 and finishing in 11th, the Kiwi has impressed in what is supposedly the worst car on the grid. Has a new combatant entered Alpha Tauri's Thunderdome for next season? Yeah, uh, yes, I would say so. I think he's doing really well. It's yeah, well, I'm a bit spectacular in an Alpha Tauri, but, you know, and especially when your teammate last week got nobbled by shitty strategy and this week nobbled by his car not working. But I think he's doing really well. I'm a big fan of Liam Two Hands Lawson. <laughs> <laughs> Old double fists. No, wait, that's something else. I think he's the best New Zealand driver since Brendan Hartley. I think he's the best New Zealand driver since uh, Jack Brabham. He was from Australia, but sure. Bruce McLaren. Bruce McLaren. Denny Holm. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, fuck, fuck the lot of you. I'm done. Uh, move on. Standings. What is it now? Whatever. Alfa Romeo. Oh, Alter... God, there's two more fucking teams. Sorry, Karen. <laughs> Alfa Romeo. Valtteri Bottas got a point, but no one noticed. Not even him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I genuinely yeah. didn't notice. I looked at the I looked at the results, didn't notice. I find I find it's like it's have you ever seen Westworld, the TV show where like yes. if if they mm-hmm. if you're a robot, you just can't see some stuff because it's programmed into you. I, I wonder if I'm a robot because whenever I see the Alfa Romeo drivers, I just like mm, doesn't seem like anything to me. There was an episode of Black Mirror like that. Was there? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't watch this it. season one. I believe this is it. Ooh. We're in the Matrix. Haas. Haas are now the second best team with the Haas livery after Alpha Tauri changed to theirs. In protest, they drove really slowly. Alpha Tauri looked like Haas this weekend, didn't they? Was that just me? I'll tell you what, I've just remembered something about Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo had a different livery. Oh. It was like an Italian flag, but with black on it, which, you know, you could argue with the state of politics in Italy is pretty up from it. Right? Oy, oy. Um, politics. Uh, but yeah, look, politics. that's the only thing I remember about them. But it's still more interesting than Haas. I don't remember anything about them. All of which takes us to the standings with Terry Saunders. And the standings is about stealing things because <laughs> Carlos Sainz got his watch stolen. So I thought... What would all the drivers steal if they were given a chance? Max Verstappen in first place steals girlfriends for a living. Uh, Sergio Perez would steal sugar sachets. I just think he's the type. Um, in third place, Fernando Alonso steals youth. Uh, Lewis Hamilton steals hearts. Carlos Sainz steals patience. And Charles Leclerc steals himself for another long season. <laughs> George Russell steals clothes and poses from the Littlewoods catalogue. And Lando Norris pirates games. Lance Stroll steals clothes just for the thrill, like Winona Ryder. And Pierre, he doesn't need the money. He doesn't need them. He can afford them, but he just does it. Uh, Pierre Gasly also steals girlfriends. And Ocon also, also girlfriends. I can't remember which way around they were, so it doesn't matter. Oscar Piastri steals lives. Uh, that's that joke again. Uh, Alexander Albon steals for his mum. Uh, Nico Hulkenberg can fall back to his job at a steel factory. Uh, Bottas steals styles that were a joke. Joe Ganyu steals the void of knowledge of anything around him. I still know nothing about this guy. Um, Yuki Snowden steals the start of the race. And Kevin Magnussen stole my balls. <laughs> and I went back to an old format for the constructors, which is I googled 10 facts about Italy and tried to shoehorn it in <laughs> to the constructors. 
But I found one that was 10 facts for children, and they think children are stupid. So in first place, Italy was established in 1861, which is the last time that Red Bull didn't win a race. In second place, this is the fact, there are some fantastic Italian food and drinks. Toto (laughs) Wolf is a big fan of humble pie. (laughs) Uh, the third fact is people speak Italian, which is Ferrari, so fair enough. The fourth fact, and this is the actual fact in the thing, is the weather changes throughout the year, like <laughs> Aston Martin's fall. Fifth place, the capital city is Rome, which wasn't built in a day. McLaren last won a championship in 2008, by the way. Um, sixth place, the majority of people living there are Roman Catholic, and Alpine short needs to confess to something. Seven, there are active volcanoes in Italy. Some say if you look into a volcano, you can see all the way back to 1992. It's Williams. In eighth place, the most popular sport is football. Haas is better at football. That's Haas. In ninth place, some notable figures were Italian. That was the fact. (laughs) But they don't drive for Alfa Romeo. (laughs) And And in tenth place, the population is the sixth highest in Europe, right behind Daniel Ricciardo, who, recovering from his surgery, is currently the seventh highest man in Europe. Or just on morphine. (laughs) (laughs) And now, the man of the match of driving. Carlos Carlos Sainz. And now it's time for the State of F1 with Terry Saunders. Okay, okay, okay. Red Bull have won all the races this year. They've scooped up all the records. And now in percentage terms, they're going to try and beat Williams 92 and McLaren 1988. Can they actually do the otherwise impossible and win every race in a season? With the 2022 rule change, this really should have been impossible. The whole point was closer racing, more overtaking, and no one team getting a jump on all the others and absolutely dominating the sport for years like this has happened every other time the rules have changed. Oh my God, why did we even allow ourselves to hope? Long-term listeners will know how I feel about this. How I want Max Verstappen to crash hilariously on the last corner of the last race. And is it Glock? Let Hamilton win. Or to let or to win every race but come second and third once just to make it not count. Or you or you do you know what? You don't know me. You don't know me anymore. Don't worry. I have a solution. You know what? I kind of want him to win every race now. I've long given up on the idea that any craftily worded tweet might puncture his armour or how a state of F1 calling him Crash Verstappen might make him think twice. If anything, I've made him fucking stronger. (laughs) And longer, longer term listeners will know that I'm fickle. I used to hate Hamilton, Alonso, Senna even, and then huge success, hilarious career flops or untimely deaths really made me (laughs) reevaluate my positions. So go on, Max. You can do it. You have my total support, faith, and fandom. I believe in you. I'm proud of you. I love you, Max. There. That will fuck him up. (laughs) (sighs) Poor Max. That's it from us. It's goodbye to Phil Tromans. Goodbye. We haven't had time to talk about uh, Alex Pelo and McLaren again because he's just he's just won the IndyCar Championship and McLaren are suing him, even though he's their driver. What's going on? I don't know. And to Terry Saunders. I was also going to say we haven't had time to talk about something about McLaren doing surprise moves for next year IndyCar because I'm just reading a headline, but that's all I've got. I haven't got time. Bye. We'll be back in a minute to discuss the Singapore Grand Prix in Singapore. In the meantime, check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash for f one sake, and follow us on Twitter at for f one sake. Terry, where can people buy merch? <laughs> I, I genuinely right. forgot the website. ff1s.com forward slash shop, shop, shop. <laughs> Thanks for listening. I've been Drew Stern. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks, Drew. Thank you, Drew. Bye, 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 bye